This interview is a part of the Oklahoma Historical Society's Oral History Program, Living Legends, Collection. This interview was originally conducted on May the 7th, 1971. The interview is conducted by Miss Billy Smith. The interviewee is Mrs. Evelyn Swaggy Maharis. That's M-A-H-E-R-E-S. The interview was conducted in Tahlequah, Oklahoma at the Tahlequah Northeastern State College. This uh, interview is being re-recorded on July the 22nd, 1985 for inclusion in the permanent collections of the oral history program by Judith Michener. Okay, Mrs. Meharis. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to visit with you a few minutes and ask you some questions concerning your school days at the female seminary. When were you a student at the female seminary? 1906 to 1910, the last year of the old school. Okay. Do you recall some of the courses you were enrolled in? Well, I was enrolled from the, went through the fourth grade up to the ninth grade. Skipped the sixth grade. Okay. Do you recall some of your teachers and what they were like? Yes. Meta Foreman was my science teacher. And um, Ida Moser was my art teacher. Beulah Benton Edmondson was my mathematics teacher. Janana Ballard was my English, our literary teacher. And uh, my music teacher was Find her name. Find the music teacher. Dora V. Stone? Mm-hmm. Our music teacher, Dora Stone. Okay, do you recall any particular uh, teachers and what they were like? Oh, uh, we, uh, Mrs. Allen was the superintendent of the school. Um, yes. We uh, were taught discipline. The teachers enforced it. And uh, we had uh, Beulah Benton Edmondson we loved very well. She was a very highly uh, teach, a very highly educated teacher. She would inspire us. I remember her saying, a hint to the wise is sufficient. Knowledge is the only jewel that will not decay. Miss Ballard was on a motherly type that looked after us, was very sweet, and then she was strict in her discipline, but very kind as a mother. If we'd have a letter from home and there's something happened and we'd cry about it, get a little homesick, Miss Ballard would come to us, put her arms around us and kind of pet us and dry up our tears. Very sweet. And uh, Miss Foreman was very uh, uh, dignified and uh, would take us out on walks to study the bees and the flowers and the woods and, and to get our science lesson that day and come back to the laboratory. And um, we had very good teachers, very uh, efficient. And uh, we didn't have much trouble. Uh, with the teachers or with the pupils. Okay. Uh, can you tell us any of the things that you were allowed to do in your spare time, like picnics or dances? Well, uh, once a year we had a picnic on the Illinois Bluff, the Illinois River. Of course, we had sponsors. The teacher would take us. But our old uh, colored cook would load up our the wagon then, horses, with all our food and, and uh, everything to eat and take it. And then we... Uh, Usually, we walk for exercise. A teacher sponsors, and we would walk out there. We had walks every day after school for exercise all around this town for three and four and five miles. And we'd go and picnic that day at the Cooties Bluff out on the Illinois River. And then uh, we had parties about every once in a while. The male seminary boys would come over. They were allowed to see us about once ever two or three months or something, not ever, not like now. And they would come over and we'd sit in the, um, in the 
chapel or the auditorium and visit with our friends and, and talk and visit and have refreshments with the male seminary boys. And uh, then on uh, Sunday afternoons, we had what we called a quiet hour. We would uh, go to our rooms and for one hour, we'd have to be quiet. Miss Ballard would walk up and down the hall to see if she could hear us. We had to meditate and think and study or read or write letters home for one hour was called the quiet hour to ourselves in our room. Mornings on Sunday we went to the church of our choice in downtown Tahlequah and maybe one of the teachers would be with the group that went to the Presbyterian Church or the Baptist Church. We attended services. And Sunday afternoon we had that quiet hour in our room after lunch. Now where did you eat your meals? Here on campus? Or no, we had the, in the dining room. In there? In the seminary. In the seminary we had a large dining room and kitchen. We ate in the dining room our meals. We uh, responded by bells would ring for the class hours that come to the uh, for the dining room to eat, the bells would ring, and we'd go by them. We could hear it all over the building. The bell would ring. Or to the chapel of mornings, we had we met in the chapel for our opening exercise before we went to our classrooms of mornings. Okay. Do you recall anything unusual that happened on the campus when you were a student? On the campus, we had lovely times on the campus. We'd play. This campus now doesn't look like it did then. It was fenced with a high fence around it. None of these buildings were here. And as we said, none of the boys could climb over to us. And we'd play out there in basketball. We had a basketball team we, a verse of the girls' basket. We played basketball, and we girls would... Uh, we had a laundry room, and uh, uh, it taught us um, the science of uh, domestic art, domestic science. And we could cook, go out to there and cook. Or we'd make fudge and candy. And, and after they'd let us, and of course the teacher taught us our lessons in uh, cooking and come time for our class. And then we went out and we'd, we'd make candy, fudge, and, and play on the campus and after school hours. And I remember one time, this became a state in 1907. The first governor was Governor Haskell. And they was running him for governor. And I forget who was his opponent. But anyhow, he was a visiting around over the state campaigning, and he came to Tahlequah. Well, the superintendent heard that Governor Haskell, uh, uh, Mr. Haskell then, was coming to Tahlequah. So about the only place, a nice big dining room, she invited him up for the evening banquet. Well, our music teacher got us girls and drilled us and said, now we're going to we decorate the tables in a big dining room and for this banquet. He's going to make a speech to us. We were all enthused to hear who would be our first, if he would get to be our first governor. Well, we dressed all up and, and we went to the dining room. They said when he'd come in, he'd be, he was escorted by the mayor or other dignitaries. That Miss Carey, she could, she, may, she could compose songs. So she got us all together and, com and composed this song and it sticks with me today. I, Never forgotten it. As Mr. Haskell entered the dining room, we wanted to greet him in his party for he's escorted to his table with, Haskell, Haskell, he's the man. If I can't vote, my sweetheart can. And that was before woman suffrage. <laughs> it came in, uh, woman suffrage, uh, 1922, I believe. Right? And so that was our song, Haskell, Haskell, he's the man. If he can't vote, my sweetheart can. And we sang it to him, and he came in. He did get to be the first governor. Well, it just got him. He bowed, and he liked it, you know. For the girls, we all sang that. And then he came into the banquet. We had a nice dinner and talked. He talked to us. I remember that. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, do you uh, remember the burning of the male seminary on Easter Sunday morning, 1910? Yes, I remember a little about that. Of course, we weren't allowed to, uh, we couldn't get over there, go near it, anything, but it was an awful thing about them. They got out, no one was burned, but they lost their trunks and school books and all those things. don't remember too much about it. Uh, were you permitted to date the students from the Mayo Seminary? With the male seminary, we could date, but we never went out alone with them places like we do, you know. We never did that, but they'd come over and visit and see us or to concerts or parties. Okay. 
were you required to be in the building at a certain time each night? Oh, yes. We had to be in bed and the lights out by 9 o'clock or 9.30. We couldn't stay up too late. And if we talked after that, the... Miss Ballard would go down the hall and hear us, to, and we didn't get quiet or go to sleep. Why would she'd make us get up and dress and take her to her room and make us sit up till midnight? We'd have to sew. She'd on something. She'd have some sewing there or bring her books and study. So we had to go to bed and be quiet when the lights went out. Uh, do you remember anything about the building of the female seminary? No, it was of course built when I came to school here. It was. Uh, built in 18 and 51 or 46 after the old seminary burned. It's in there. Mm-hmm. I remember with that and then the first uh, one of the first superintendents when I came here then was still talking about a lovely woman named Miss Wilson for she served as superintendent for 26 years she wasn't forgotten when I came it was still Miss Allen was the superintendent then but this Miss Wilson was a uh, 26 years she served now I don't know I think she was the first and after they okay. made after the built this built in 1851 1887. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember certain facts of the female seminary, like the kitchen? Sleeping oh, kitchen, yes. Uh, we love the kitchen and the dining room. And uh, between the kitchen and the dining room was a little long pantry room. And uh, we didn't have the sinks like now, and large dish, pan, dish pans where the girls washed the dishes, and we had to put them in another large dish pan of the hot water and scald them. Everything was clean. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we had to keep our rooms very clean, and uh, we uh, had uh, pretty little curtains, and we would hunt little what knots or little knickknacks, something, pin them on our curtains, you know, just little, just little uh, pick-up things, hot and mounted to nothing. Right. For brighten up your room, the girls pin them on the curtains. Our rooms were pretty and clean. We had to keep them that way. What do you consider to be the most important event in your life while you were a student at the seminary? Oh, well, there was lots of things that I see now that made me happy. We, uh, I love my teachers and the classes, and uh, I love the chapel exercise of mornings. The scripture was read in a prayer, and we sang. And as we marched down the hall two by two, a teacher would, a music teacher would still have us singing and keeping step <laughs> to our classrooms. And I enjoyed that. There was just many things. We were all uh, very, a lot of us would get homesick in those days. Homes then seemed like meant so much to us more than now because now we have cars to go and more things and home then. We was very happy when, we, when school was out and we got to go home because some of us would get homesick. We didn't get to go home every weekend like they do now. We'd get to go home Christmas, mm -hmm. then come back and have to stay till May. And so we would get homesick, you know. But uh, when they'd say we're going to go home, we'd think we'd have to begin packing mm -hmm. month before, getting ready, and that was quite a event with them all. School did last nine months? Last nine months. We'd come September and out, go home for Christmas, and then uh, and some didn't go home for Christmas, and then we'd stay till May. Last of May, yes. Okay, the Cherokees used the gallows for serious crimes, and since they were located in downtown Tahlequah, mm -hmm. did you ever witness a hanging? No, I never witnessed not one. I heard of it, and in our walks, we'd visit places around Tahlequah, and we'd, we, I saw them and explained them how they did it, mm -hmm. the old gallows down in town, but I never were witnessed. Were they down by the old Jail mm -hmm. the old where the old jail was. They're still standing there. They're still standing there. Mm -hmm. That's what I found the out. The old jail is. I don't know about the gallows. Well, I, I think they are. I the old jail is. is. Yes, that's where they were. Okay, since Tahlequah was the capital of the Cherokee Nation, do you recall an election or inauguration of a Cherokee chief? Well, um, at that time that I remember of, um, the. He served the longest of any chief was Ross, John Ross. John Ross. 
for, for the Cherokees came with them from the Southland when they were the government brought them here, and he served here till he. I don't believe he died here. I think he went east and his folks. But I remember him as uh, he would just be uh, reelected every year unanimously, you know. And he was a good chief, and he served I think 37 or 38 years, mm -hmm. long time. I remember him. Okay, what was graduation day like at the seminary? Oh, they were uh, quite excited and in a flurry and, and getting their white dresses ready to wear, long white dresses, and, and they wore their hair sometimes in this pompadour like we're doing now. I guess it's coming back in style. Mm -hmm. See the pictures of the teacher's mm -hmm. hair? Mm -hmm. Like the girls puff them up mm -hmm. now. And uh, they had quite long exercises, very nice. And the parents would come to see the graduate mm -hmm. for the graduation. It was very nice. Hey, can you tell us what downtown Tahlequah looks like? Well, it's the same old street as I drove through today, the same old long street. But of course, there is more stores and different. Uh, it's, it's not changed much. I don't see much arrangement in the downtown street. The old okay. squares there in the courthouse where we've stopped on our walks and, and uh, we would get to go shopping maybe once a, in a while, once every two weeks or something with a sponsor, a teacher, or go down and get her picture taken. We wanted to ask the teacher to go down and have her pictures made in the studio. <laughs> Finally, she let us. And then uh, it's just about the same to me downtown. Looks like it is. Okay, since you've enjoyed a long and very happy life, what advice would you give to college students today? Well, they have, in a way, many more advantages than we did. And uh, it seemed to be like we had uh, stricter discipline. They feel freer to speak their mind. I think they're farther advanced and uh, a lot more opportunities that we had. And uh, I uh, pray they will use it right because they do have a wonderful opportunity and future with the knowledge they get today. And all we learn and know in this life is to be used for good for mankind. And I know that the students of the day, with these opportunities that I see in their college life, that they, they can find a way to live and do good for mankind. Okay. This has been Billy Smith talking with Mrs. Evelyn Swaggy Maharis. We were it was a real pleasure and a privilege to visit with you these few moments and uh, your willingness to answer these questions is a proof that you want the history of a great people to live on by sharing your exper experiences with us. And thank you, Mrs. Mahers. You're Betty Smith? Billy Smith. Billy. Yes. There's a Betty Smith, a lovely little Cherokee girl at Bartlesville. And you said, I thought you said Betty.